All right, Bible readers, it is time for another quick Bible study, and today it comes from our reading in Isaiah 37 through 41. So what I'm calling today's video is, will you believe science or the book? In other words, when science and the Bible disagree, which one are you going to believe? So yesterday, we read and discussed in Isaiah chapter 30, the idea of not going to Egypt. And Egypt, again, represents the world in the Bible. And so we talked about not going to Egypt to take counsel, to seek a covering that is not from God, and because it ends in shame and confusion. So we, we talked about that in, in yesterday's video. You can go check that out if you want. And in and just in summary, Isaiah 30, and I'm just going to read portions of um, Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1 through 3. So it says, Woe to the rebellious children that take counsel, but not of me. Verse 2 says, That go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth. In other words, didn't consult with God, just went to the world. And then your shame and your confusion in verse 3. So again, just summaries of those three verses that we talked about in yesterday's video. So today, the question really is, like I already said, will you believe science falsely so-called, as the Bible says, or will you believe the book? In 1 Timothy 6, 20, Paul is writing to Timothy, and he says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings, and oppositions of science falsely so-called. It's not, you know, science is only mentioned a couple of times in the Bible, and you know, one of those is a strong warning to be careful about the oppositions of science falsely so-called. So I think I think this verse is perfect for today's topic, which is, you know, are you going to are you going to believe the Bible or are you going to believe science when they don't agree? And trust me, if you've never read the entire Bible or studied it for years, you may not know how many disagreements there are. However, what's really, you know, and this is maybe paradoxical. The Bible has been proven to be right over and over and over again throughout the centuries where science said, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, and people said, oh, see, God's wrong. Bible's wrong. But then years and years later, the Bible was proven to be right. That's happened over and over again. I'm not going to get into specific examples here because that's not the purpose of this video. So when it comes to the relationship between these things that we call the earth, the sun, the moon and the stars. Again, the question is, will you believe science or the Bible? So let's look at some things. There, there's kind of like two camps with, with this idea or this uh, topic of the relationship between the earth, the sun, the moon, and the stars. And so the question I'm posing to you is, will you be in the camp that you know, kind of minimizes the Bible and, uh, you know, kind of reduces it down to like an ancient historical and cult cultural series of writings by uninspired men providing little significance in the face of modern science. Is that, is that kind of who you want to be or maybe who you are? I'm going to challenge you on that. Or I guess my other question is, will you be in the camp that believes God is true and every man a liar as written in Romans 3, 4? So let's read that real quick. Romans 3, 4. Again, this is the apostle Paul. And he says, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So when Paul said, as it is written, he was referencing Psalm 116.11, where it says, I said in my haste, all men are liars. Hey, I'm a liar. Are you a liar? I think if we're all being honest, we lie. You know, the Bible doesn't say, you know, in the Ten Commandments, it doesn't say thou shalt not lie. It says thou shalt not bear false witness. So there's lies of omission and lies of commission. In other words, I can tell you something that's not true. That's a lie of commission. Or if you ask me something, I can leave information out. And that's a lie of omission. Okay, so the Bible is always accurate. So let's look at a few of the many references in the Bible concerning this question of so-called science in the Bible, specifically around the relationship between, you know, these things that we call the earth, sun, moon, and stars. So in Joshua, and again, this is not an exhaustive list, but I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. They're in the notes. Um, I'm really just kind of including the, um, 
you know, a condensed version of each of these verses, I strongly encourage you to go read these in their full um, uh, version, as well as any context that makes you feel comfortable. But let's look at these real quick. Joshua 10, 13, and the sun stood still and the moon stayed. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. This is a situation where basically God stopped the sun based upon what some men were wanting or needing from the Lord at that moment. Verse 14 of Joshua 10 says, and there was no day like that before it or after it. Yeah. Hey, we've never seen anything like that. We, you know, in, in our modern times, God's never stopped the sun. Moving on. First Chronicles 16:30 says, Fear before him all the earth, the world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Well, that's weird. What are we told about the earth? Spinning around, you know, spinning around the sun. This is what we're told. This is what we're taught by science. Job 9, 7. This is God, or this is Job, you know, speaking for God. God never came back and corrected him about this. He says, which commandeth the sun, and it riseth not. Okay, so again, if I've lost you, <laughs> I apologize. The idea here is that the Bible is always talking about the sun and the moon moving, going up and down, you know, rising, not rising. And then it's always talking about the earth being stable. So it's really, it's really interesting. Psalms 104.5 says, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? Psalm 104, 19 says, the sun knoweth his going in, I'm sorry, the sun knoweth his going down. So again, it's always this expression of the sun moving and the earth staying still. Okay, but science tells us just the opposite of that. Ecclesiastes 1, 5, the sun also ariseth and the sun goeth down. Isaiah 38, 8 says, behold, I will Bring again the shadow of the degrees, which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, 10 degrees backward. So the sun returned 10 degrees by which degrees it was gone down. Have you ever read this verse in the Bible? Did you, do you have any idea what this is about? This is about a king, uh, Hezekiah, basically crying out to God because God said, hey, you're going to die. And Hezekiah wanted more years. And the Lord granted it to him, gave him 15 more years. And in the process, he, 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 turned the, he turned the sun back. So again, for the reference, the sun's moving around us, not the other way. Isaiah 60, verse 20. We're going to get to Isaiah here in a few days, but uh, there's a good reference here. It says, the sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. Again, reference to the sun and the moon moving. Jeremiah 31, 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night. So this is an example, kind of a specific example of the sun and the moon and the stars being uh, like their purpose is to serve the earth. You will never find a verse in the Bible or the earth where it's suggested even that the earth is doing something to serve the sun, the moon, and the stars. It's always every, every other thing somehow serving the earth. Habakkuk 3.11. This is the last one we're going to look at as far as the references. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. Okay, again, sun and the moon standing still because God told it to. That means it was moving. All right, so what's the conclusion? If the earth revolved around the sun as science would have you believe, then God would have needed to command the earth to stand still. Okay, and I've alluded to this already. So it wouldn't be the other way around. And here's a, a final thought from our reading today. So the Bible speaks of the ends of the earth. Well, that's a strange thing. Here's just a couple of examples. Isaiah 41.5 and Isaiah 41.9 both contain the phrase, the ends of the earth. So the fact is, the ends of the earth, that phrase shows up 28 times in the King James Bible. This is what we're told. This is what we're taught as young people. Okay, This is a soccer ball. This is what we're told, the earth and the moon and the sun and all these things, that, that this is what they represent. Okay, a sphere or a globe, it has no ends. In other words, if, if you imagine that 
this this was you know the earth or whatever and and you started walking and you just kept walking you walk all the way around and, and there's no end it doesn't matter what direction you go there's no end to this thing okay and and we know that in like pure mathematics we know there's no end it just goes round and round and round forever right in a, a perfect circle okay so in Isaiah 40, verse 22, it says, it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Well, that's really strange because that's not a circle. That's a sphere. And, and God is the greatest mathematician ever. He, he created all of these sciences around mathematics. This is a sphere. This lo loosely represents a circle. Okay, it's round, kind of looks the same on video, right? They're both they're both round. Okay, but one has no ends. This one, you know, if, if we just, you know, this is a frisbee. Okay, so so bear with me. But if you started walking on a frisbee, what would happen? You'd get to the end of it. It never ends this way, but it's two-dimensional. This is you know, three-dimensional. So this, this has ends to it. Okay. So the Bible talks about the earth having ends. Very strange. Very strange by comparison to what we're taught. So do I want to argue till the end of my life about whether the earth is a sphere or flat? I really don't. Do I want to argue till the end of my life that, you know, about whether, you know, to, to let God be true, but every man a liar? <laughs> yeah, you bet I do. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Let God be true and every man a liar. Okay. That's all I got. I hope that this challenges you. Even if you disagree with me, I would encourage you to get into the Bible and ask yourself, ask God, what is true? What is true about these things? Does it matter in my life as a Christian whether the earth is a sphere or whether it's flat? Hey, it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference to my life so much, but it does make a difference for me as a Christian to say, I'm going to believe God. And I'll give you one last challenge before I wrap this up. Read and study the entire Bible and come back to me at some point and try to prove using only the Bible that the earth is like this. You can't do it. You cannot prove using only the Bible that the earth is a sphere. Okay. I hope that, I don't know, inspires you or makes you angry or makes you think I'm stupid or whatever it does. I hope that it makes you think. And that's why I'm here. Have a good day.